What is research? In this introduction to the educational research, we're going to talk about different kinds of research and how they relate to practice. Shuttleworth defines research as the gathering of data, information, and facts for the advancement of knowledge. We can distinguish between scientific research, that's what we're going to be talking about in this class, and then also research in humanities or, for example, artistic research. These are different types of research. What we're going to be focusing on is scientific research. An important part to be aware of is the reflexivity. This means that we as researchers do influence our research and we need to be aware of to which point we have an interest uh, an influence on the way that we conduct research the way that we collect data the way that we analyze data and the way that we interpret data we have beliefs and opinions that shape the way that we view the information that we gather Here is a picture of a research cycle. It's important to think of research as a cyclical process. If we start here in one, we start with a problem. Research has an unanswered question, and we're trying to answer this question. We then, in a second step, define a goal in terms of a clear statement of the problem. Then, right, this is our research question. If the, the research question is really large, we further subdivide this question into further sub-problems. Right? Let's say that our research question is, how can we improve education in the United States? It's a huge topic, huge question. We can then further subdivide this question into different areas, different elements. For example, you could talk about how we can improve education in math or how we can improve education in uh, reading and writing, right? Or you could think more of different age groups. For example, how can we improve uh, elementary school education or how can we improve education at the high school level and so forth. And then again, narrow it down even further. Through our theory, here at element four, we propose tentative solutions. Right? We have a theory in mind and we formulate hypotheses based on this theories. And then we come up with a study. Number four, we collect data, we collect a study where we explore these hypotheses in more detail. We try to figure out if the data that we're collecting is in support of our hypotheses or if the data that we collect is in conflict with the hypotheses that we have. And there also it's important to keep in mind that we sometimes find the, the support for our hypothesis varies, right? We have stronger support, we have weaker support, we sometimes have no support, or we have opposing results that are uh, totally against what we initially felt was the uh, truth. Then at the next step here, we do interpret the meaning of this data, we conf confirm our hypothesis or reject them, and then the cycle begins again. We have a new level of knowledge and we can further examine questions. One element of research is that usually the more questions you answer, you uh, realize that you know don't know as much and more questions show up. So it's really a learner's mindset. 
Now, if you think of the general research process, another way to look at it is this element here. And think of this as a very cyclical element as well. This is another way of looking at the research cycle that we just looked at. Right? You start out with a wish to do research. You start to formulate and clarify your research topic. Then you review the literature in a critical way. It's important. Right? We look at the theory. What is out there already? What do I know about this particular question? Then we use a research approach and strategy. We uh, look at access to different samples and we address ethical issues. For example, you, you also get uh, approval from IRB boards and things like that. And this is cyclical here. You see these uh, dotted lines. Sometimes, let's say here, you critically review the literature. You find out, actually, I find a lot of answers to my research question. I can further refine my question. Sometimes you, f you don't find a lot of literature about a question if it's really innovative. Then you might have to narrow down your question or broaden it again. All right. So as you go through this process, you learn more and you might have to go back a few steps in it. Then if you come down here, you're going to plan your data collection and actually collect your data. All right. There it's a good idea to think of, is this a data out there somewhere or do I have to start from scratch? And once you have your data, you're thinking about using, you analyze your data using quantitative or qualitative methods. But actually, if you use one of these different methods or groups of methods, that will strongly influence your design. So this is really an interactive process here. Once you have your data, you write your report, you interpret your data, and you submit your report.